Hi, I'm Dr. Leela Lewis, and this is another segment of Liberty and Health Alliance. We are so glad that you have joined us for this program. It is going to be very exciting. We're going to be talking about Washington, D.C., the plans that God is putting together, but most importantly, God's plan for our mind. Yes, the title is, What is God's Plan for America? How do we know God's true plan for America? Well, we're going to be talking about that today. Well, beyond presidential elections, 2024 is set for a very interesting year. And we want to know, what does God want us to do this year? I want to welcome my good friend and partner, Scott Ritzema. Scott Ritzema, of course, is the Vice President of Liberty and Health Alliance. And he's also the Director and Speaker for Belt of Truth Ministries. So we are so glad that you're here with us again, Scott. It's good to be here, Dr. Leela. Well, you know, Scott, can you open us with prayer before we start this discussion? Yes, let's pray. Father in heaven, we just pause now to seek your good and perfect will. And we ask you to speak and make known to us your plans to prosper your work and that we might bring glory to your name and blessing to our fellow man. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Scott. So, you know, we are doing something very exciting this summer in Washington, D.C. Before we start talking about that, there's a lot of questions people have on their mind. God, our title, of course, is God's true plan or God's plan for America. But how do we even know as individuals what God's plan is or will for our lives? Can you share a little light with us on, you know, how what is the Bible and and how do we even know what God's will is for us? I like that you use the word light because that's what this is. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In fact, there's a text that refers to God's will in Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. And at the end of this scripture, it refers to that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's the end of the text. So how do we get there? We get there through verses 1 and 2 of Romans 12. We arrive at God's will the following way. Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or form of worship. And do not be conformed to this world. So you've noticed two things, especially standing out so far, that our bodies are offered to God. And that's what we do with the health ministry, but also not to be conformed. So exerting and exercising individual liberty of conscience and not following the crowd and being conformed to the pattern of this world. And then it goes on, of course, the alternative to the worldly model of conformity is being transformed. Be not conformed, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. And there will be plenty of mind food at the Washington, D.C. event the scriptures being taught, and a number of different teaching seminars in addition to the healing ministry that we have the privilege of serving in the community in Washington, D.C. Wow, that's really good. Mr. Ritzam, I really appreciate that. In your opinion, do you think that this is very pertinent in the timing for America right now, understanding God's will and plan for us? Well, absolutely. Um, I was actually just teaching last night on American history in a seminar, and it, 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 I was quoting from Benjamin Franklin, who said that if individuals in America do not self-govern by a moral standard, then a constitutional limited government doesn't have what it takes to really to, to, to restrain the passions of man. So we need to, as individuals, have that heart change and that conversion, and then that boils over into society and allows for good governance and order in society. But you see the social fabric ripping apart and our breakdown of our of our once free republic, the principles of it being repudiated. So if you want to see what God's plan is for America or frankly, any nation, the whole globe, you go to the individual relationship with Jesus Christ. And also, you mentioned the mind of Christ, and I really appreciate that. Pastor Kelly, I, I want to follow up that that comment that Scott said about having the mind of Christ. How can we, Pastor Kelly, how can we have the mind of Christ? And more importantly, what is the mind of Christ? If we, we don't know what it is, how can we have it? Well, the, the mind of Christ is a function of a couple things. Number one, it's a function of a divine transformation that comes from allowing the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts. Then it's a function of 
going beyond justification into a sanctifying relationship where we're educated by the word, transformed by the living word inside of us. And then the mind of Christ, I think, finds its fulfillment in acting out the life of Christ in, in kind deeds, thoughtful acts, uh, an interest in the spiritual, physical, mental, and social well-being of the people around us. And we know the mind of Christ is described by the Bible, is Jesus taking uh, the role of a servant, not needing to be God, caring enough to tell the truth, being willing to suffer for doing it, always being kind, and being true to the very end. Well, that's beautiful, Pastor Kelly. And in some of those things, that's, that's what we want to do for the people in Washington, D.C., and, and I think that's that's very inspiring to me. Well, the, a special thing for Washington, D.C. is that Washington, D.C. is where so much leadership centers, not only for our country, but for the world. So if the people that are governing us have the heart of a servant and they know that their servanthood is a role of leadership and they genuinely care for the people around them like Jesus did, willing to be willing to lay down, uh, even at times, their political careers to do what's right. Uh, these are the kind of men that we need governing, similar uh, to the kind of self-control and the dynamics that Scott was just talking about. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Pastor Kelly. Well, that, that leads me to ask uh, another question of Ricky Kearns. Ricky Kearns is a nurse, and he's also a pastor studying a lot of prophecy and history. And Ricky, you know, Pastor Kelly talked about our nation, talked about, you know, having the mind of Christ as a nation. You know, we're, we're United States citizens, but really this applies to, as, as was stated previously, any individual around the globe. How do we know as a nation what God's will is for us? That is a very profound question, Leela. And to, to remember that as a nation, God doesn't save us as a nation, but he saves us as individuals. And he gives every opportunity for that individual transaction that Scott was talking about and Pastor Ron Kelly was talking about to take place. In the case of America, I believe it is by divine appointment that the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights have come into being. So on, on one level, that's how we know God's will in civil matters. It's to know these documents and to know these principles and be true to these principles. That's on, on one level, how can a nation know God's will for, for the nation? So there's a civil, there's, there's a civil lining, and then there's also a spiritual lining. And this is where God's church plays a role. We as a nation have the separation of church and state. So however God's will comes to us, it can never be mandated. It is, as Scott showed, self-government. And so we have the opportunity to make sure that we are being able to be self-governed. So for us to stand up for civil, uh, civil rights, to make sure that a person has the privilege and the opportunity to accept this personal relationship with God, who in the Declaration of Independence, I was just listening to this morning, actually, uh, in preparation for this. Uh, uh, among, these are the, uh, among these are all men are created equal and have been endowed with inalienable rights. Among these, among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So for us to create, to answer your question, for a nation to give its citizens, the, uh, to, to be true to the principles of allowing them to be able to share the things that they believe without, without censure, without uh, 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 any ill towards them, because that is where we came from. And these documents, I believe, is how we can know God's will for our lives. Uh, so that's uh, one way of, of answering that question. But I'm just amazed at, at how incredibly, um, somebody said this way, when America sneezes, the entire world gets a cold. I believe that attached to America's true 
it's 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 focus on these principles. We 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 have something to defend, and God has placed in our hands tools to defend it. And I believe among these is is health and liberty. That was really really well stated, and and I think picking up on that. Um, Pastor Kearns, what you what Pastor Kelly said too, flipping back to Philippians, speaking of flipping, Philippians 2, 5 to 11, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. And so we know, as you said, that this humility, this aspect of giving of oneself and protection of liberty of conscience is how we can display God's mind in us. And that's what I'm excited to talk about next. Thank you so much, Pastor Kearns. If Mr. Zirkel is here, um, we'd love to have him come in. I'm not sure if he's been able to come on. Oh, yes, wonderful. Mr. Zirkel, you are our Vice President for Legal Affairs and Religious Liberty. And we have a question for you. So we've talked a lot about this so far at this point about we've heard from the liberty of conscience side and how that plays into the mind of Christ. We've seen that the mind of Christ is so it's enwrapped. It is being humble and, and being willing to help those who can't give back. But just because we want to have Christ's love, Christ's mind in us, which of course we ourselves can't even put in ourselves. Jesus puts us in it. How, Mr. Zirkel, are we hoping to be able to accomplish these things in our program this summer entitled God's Plan for a Miracle or God's True Plan for America? Well, I think that um, when you're trying to, uh, when you're really trying to do the Lord's will, you have to actually do something. And so I think that that's um, just a real important aspect of, of, of what we're doing this summer is that we need to get out and we need to actually do something. We need to demonstrate our faith. And what I found is, is that if you have, you know, when you show that little bit of faith that you have, the Lord will add to it. And um, there's a lot of different things that we will be doing. Um, one of the things that we'll be doing is we'll be We'll be going around um, and looking at, I don't know if you've talked about the tour already, but um, I'm looking forward to that. And so we'll be learning. And, and when you learn about the, uh, uh, the history um, of religious liberty, that will help us. And it'll help us to see kind of what actions we ought to be taking. And then, of course, there's that practical action of the health programs that we'll be doing. And then, so let's let's talk about the week, if you don't mind, Mr. Zirkel. You're doing such a wonderful job. So your clinic, the, the tour, I should say, is on the 8th and the 9th. So that's July 8 and 9. For those of you who are able, we would encourage you to come. Um, you will need to register, pre-register for that. The seats are limited. So we've already received quite a number. If you're interested, we ask you to please go on the website and, and put your interest in. And then that will be on the 8th and the 9th. Then on the 10th, we're setting up for the clinic where we get to demonstrate the love of Christ, the mind of Christ to those who are in need. So we'll be setting that up on Wednesday, the 10th. And then on the 11th and the 12th, which would be a Thursday and a Friday, we'll be doing the clinic. And we've already received quite a bit of support. We're just about ready to re reveal um, some of the amazing people that God has brought into our paths that are helping to provide this opportunity. And then on Sabbath, Saturday, that would be uh, the 13th, we are looking forward to a very exciting religious liberty and health presentation on the National Mall which I think for me, Mr. Zirkel, I don't know about you, but that is really, really exciting for me to be able to literally demonstrate the mind of Christ mentally, intellectually. We're talking about the lectures and that kind of thing, but then also with our hands right then and there at our nation's capital. I don't know how you feel, but that's exciting for me. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, our nation's capital, I mean, really the eyes of the world are on this location. And I can't think of a, of a better example of a place where we're shouting it from the rooftop, which I really Absolutely. believe is what the Lord has asked us to do in these days. 
Absolutely. And then on Sunday, the following day, uh, we will have one more day of clinic for those people that weren't able to come during work days. And so we're excited about that. So we're really hoping that people will be able to join. Mr. Zirkle, do you have, I mean, you and I've had the opportunity of working together in ministry for quite a number of years. Do you have anything that you would like to encourage our, our viewers with at this point on how and why they should get involved? Well, I think, you know, if we just look and see what's going on with world events right now, um, everybody knows that um, we're not living in normal times. And um, this creates an opportunity where the world is seeking and they're starting to realize that we're in a spiritual battle. And and honestly, you know, these opportunities aren't going to come a whole lot more in, in such a, a wonderful way as to what we have right now. I mean, I, I can't predict, you know, what the what's going to happen in the world. Um, we know what ultimately happens in the world, but I really feel right now is a real special time of opportunity when the world is really open to listening and, and seeing our witness. And so I really encourage people to come now when we have this opportunity. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mr. Zirkel. I want to invite Dr. Sandy Blanchard. Dr. Sandy Blanchard is a family practitioner in Michigan. She is also a wonderful friend of mine, um, a, a wonderful mentor. And I'm just so glad. And she ran our uh, medical department now for two events. So we are very, very excited to have you with us again, Dr. Blanchard. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, glad um, to be here. Wonderful. Well, Dr. Blanchard, I have a question for you. Um, having been the medical director um, for the last couple events, can you tell us why our volunteers should go and register, um, not just necessarily in the medical department, but as a volunteer for the very special opportunity in Washington, D.C.? Well, we've been talking about the mind of Christ and Christ's role here. He came to show the love of the Father and to do his Father's will. And um, so how did he spend his time? He spent his time healing the sick and he spent his time feeding the hungry and clothing the naked. And he's told us to do the same. And he said, as you've done it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me. And so this is just a wonderful opportunity to show the love of God to the people, not just of Washington, D.C., because as we've already talked about, the eyes of the whole world are on Washington, D.C. We have a chance to show the love of God to the whole world. I mean, that is so exciting. But it takes many, many, many hands to get this job done. And um, yes, we have treated hundreds and hundreds of people in the past, but um, this is just such a, a big opportunity and we just need all kinds of hands on deck. Yes, we need medical people, but we need people to help. You know, some of our kids came last year and helped bring bottled water to all the volunteers. I mean, just we need kids helping and we need big people helping and we need, um, one of our, our volunteers says, well, you know, I can't stand all day. So we found her a sit down job. We will take everybody because it just takes us all to be able to, to get this done and to do a good job of it and to show the love of Christ. I mean, all of us, no matter what volunteer we are, can be helpful and kind and show the love of Christ. And that's what we're trying to do is show God's love to everyone we meet. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Blanchard. Um, we are so grateful for the number of volunteers that have already registered, but we need a lot more. <coughs> <coughs> so we are asking if you go to Liberty and Health Alliance and register. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, we want to thank Dr. Blanchard for that. That was wonderful. And I also want to, again, encourage you to go to libertyandhealth.org if you have not done so already. And please register. Register for the tour um, and register to volunteer. Again, seats are limited for the tour, but please do that. Well, before we end, we want to bring Pastor Kelly back up and invite him to give us a final appeal as, as we seek to have the mind of Christ and more importantly, asking Jesus to have it and then demonstrating it. Pastor Kelly? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Leela. You know, I'm thinking about several things listening to our other presenters. Number one, uh, you know, when I hear Jonathan Zirkel talking about people becoming aware that there's a great spiritual battle going on, recently someone handed me an article 
entitled The Great Moral Reset. And so I think we're beginning to realize that the issues we're up against are greater than just the regular fixes that can come through the regular means and modalities. The second thing I'm thinking about is that education is so pivotal to confidence and knowledge of what to do. And there's no place quite like Washington, D.C. to recapture the spirit of liberty. And it's been a long time since I've been. It's a great place for somebody to come and actually have a family vacation that connects with a missionary outreach. And then I think about the fact that Ellen White says the final movements will be rapid ones. Um, somebody said to me the other day, once a battle starts, things go fast. And of course, Jesus said, work while it's day for the night comes when no one can work. So I want to have the mind of Christ. I'm sure so many do want to have the mind of Christ, but that was a mind of service. It was a mind of compassion. It was a mind of truth and confidence. And so true humility can stoop to serve and it can be strong to be true. And so what Liberty and Health is about is trying to strike that beautiful balance to where the dignity and compassion of Christ is at the center of what we're doing. This event will give multiple opportunities for that. It'll weave the fabric of God's people together. And if it left even one impression in the mind of somebody that could move world events or national events or even local events in the right direction, it would be worth it. Plus, those who watered are watered also themselves. So the blessing is ours. Isaiah 58 calls us uh, the healing of God, his light shining upon us, his righteousness being our for forward guard and our rear guard. These are all things waiting for God's people as they make a priority of doing God's work. Thank you so much, Pastor Kelly. Can you close with prayer for us, please? Yeah, let's pray. Lord, thank you for all the organization and commitment, the donations of time and money, the opportunities that you create that your people will rally to. And I pray now, Lord, bless us as we anticipate this summer. May we do our best. May we have that mind of Jesus willing to spend and be spent to be all that we can be for you. And may there be a, a righteous harvest, Lord. May there be fruits of righteousness and strength to person and an understanding of what's in the future and the God who holds the future. So bless us now to that end. Uh, bless those that will make a priority of being a part of this event and pray and support it and those that can be there. And thank you for all the work going into it. We thank you for the privilege to be a part of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Kelly. Thank you to all of our contributors. And thank you to you, our viewing audience and our supporters. Again, we ask that if you have not yet gone to our website, continue to let us know that you're praying for us, that you're partnering with us, whether that be physical there in person in Washington, D.C., or financially. There's a lot of expenses in this. And again, thank you for everything that you have done to continue to provide liberty and health to those around us. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.